As a reminder, please silence all cell phones. Welcome to tonight's press conference for the Ole Miss Rebels. Ole Miss's sports information director is Madeline Marshall. Today we are joined by head coach Yolette McPhee McEwen and student athletes Angel Baker and Snuda Collins. Coach McPhee McEwen, would you like to make an opening statement? Tons of respect, <clears throat> sorry, for Gonzaga. Um, incredibly uh, well coached program, uh, team. Um, they've done a lot of great stuff all season, fought through adversity. I consider Lisa to be a friend, so um, I'm just glad we're on the winning side. We knew it would be a, a physical game. We knew um, that we were on their time zone. Um, it was their comfort, but uh, we felt like if we defend, good things could happen. And it's one of the sayings we say is we pack, pack our defense in our suitcase, so no matter where we go. So really proud of our group. We'll now take questions for the student athletes. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and have a question, please use the raise hand function. I'll call on you if we have time. Alex, I'm from Bay Area News Group. Angel, when you were at Wright State, you pulled off an NCAA tournament win to transfer here and now help Ole Miss get an NCAA tournament win for the first time in years. Just what does it mean for you to be able to do this and help the program achieve this? It means a lot. It's very exciting. Um, I think Team 48 deserves this. I feel like we worked hard for this, and uh, this means a lot for this group. We had a lot of goals, and uh, this is one of them, so it feels great. Jim Allen, Spokesman Review, Spokane. Uh, well, Snudda, uh, hats off to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you made, uh, I think, three or four three-point shots, and uh, which is way more than the entire Gonzaga team had. So uh, talk about uh, being in the group tonight. Um, coming into this game, I think I was 0 for 22, and I knew that, and I kind of took it personal. You know, I knew I, I have to score for the team. So tonight, uh, I guess I came in with a different mindset and ready to just let it go. We'll go to Zoom for the next question. Um, Michael, you can ask your question. Hey, it's the, uh, Michael Kasten, Daily Journal. Uh, you've, you mean, you, you've seen this program build up uh, all, all the different parts. What, is, what does tonight mean to you to get the NCAA tournament win and, and, and take that next step for this program? I mean, it means a lot to me. I've been here, you know, when we wasn't the absolute best, but we wasn't the worst either. But um, last year we came here, went in the first round, and we lost, and um, of course we kind of – me and Maddie, we took that personal, and we was like, next year when we when we come back, we're not losing the first game. So that's been our goal from the beginning of the season, and now we have, we've accomplished it. Alex, I'm from Bay Area News Group. For both of you, I don't know how much, if any, of the game before you saw, but have you guys even thought about the fact that you're about to play, you know, one of the top teams in the country and a recent national champion in Stanford? Well, first, uh, all of our mindsets have been on Gonzaga. Um, now we can focus on Stanford, now that we finished the job, but um, yeah, I think our coaches will set us up for that. We'll go back to Zoom for this next question. David, you can ask your question. Um, David Eckert, Clarion Ledger. Um, I, guess, I guess for both of y'all, um, you know, everybody was talking about Gonzaga and the way they shoot the three coming into this game. Um, I know, obviously, you guys talk so much about how much pride you take in your defense. Was it, was it kind of personal, I guess, for, for you guys to, to stop that, to, to run them off the line the way you did tonight? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we wanted to take away their three ball. We know they, they shoot the three ball very well. But like Coach said, we pack our defense, and we take pride in, defense, in defending the ball. Cheryl Coward, Hoofy.com. Um, you all are in rare fight company as the only team to uh, beat Gonzaga by this much. Stanford was the only, the only other team to beat them by over 20 points. And you're the only team that took South Carolina into overtime. And uh, Stanford was the other team that <laughs> took them into overtime. So given those two facts, does that give you confidence going into play Stanford on, on Sunday? 
Um, after the um, South Carolina game, that kind of showed us, you know, what we could do. So um, I wouldn't say that this particular game gave us confidence. I mean, we already know what we can do if we defend and dictate and disrupt. So, you know, we're just ready. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Uh, Janie McCauley from Associated Press. So you actually k keep track of the misses you have, but I mean, is that something your team does? And then just to, to or is somebody giving you a hard time in practice or how's this going? You just um, said you'd missed 22 in a row. Do you remember your last one I, that you made? I, I, I did not. I personally, okay. I personally keep up with it. You know, I go, go back and look. Because, I mean, I know I didn't make any shots, you know, in the SEC tournament. So, <laughs> I just wanted to see, like, how many did I take in an attempt. So, that's how I knew that. Okay. But it was three-pointers or, or field goals? It was both. It was real. Field goals. It was rough. Oh, so you really were in a little... Uh... Yeah, I was, I, was in a, I was in a little slump. Okay. <laughs> how did you kind of just... You hit the practice floor, you know, this past week and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock these down. Um, just not overthinking and just shooting how I know I can shoot and just being ready. Angel, did you know that Snedda had missed that? I, I did not know that. Every time Snedda shoots, I think it's going in. So. <laughs> and to kind of – I know Snedda brought up Madison, but for her to make the impact that she had on both ends of the floor as well – well, can you speak to kind of what she has meant for you guys in these big games? Uh, Maddie just brings something that nobody else can bring. Her energy, uh, the way she defends the ball, her length is just, like I said, nobody else can bring it. And it's, I'm very grateful to have her for, as a teammate, for sure. Fuck. Any more questions for the student athletes? Thank you, Angel and Snuda. You can rejoin your teammates in the locker room. Thank you. We'll now take questions for Coach McPhee McEwen. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and have a question, please use the raise hand function. I will call on you if we have time. All right, Michael Robertson, African-American athlete. So first of all, Coach, it's a coincidence that I was actually born in Lafayette County. Or oh, I'm sorry, Lafayette County. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, so it's always a cool deal whenever Ole Miss is involved. Yeah. But my question is, uh, now that you guys advance to this level, what is it going to be like to go up against Tara you know, a legendary coach, and, a, and like Will said earlier, a team that won a couple years ago. So what is the moment like for you right now? Um, it's, it's incredible. You know, um, I grew up being a student of the game, so obviously Tara is someone that I've, I've admired. But I've had time to, like, meet with her a couple times. But I think this is the first time she, like, knows who I am. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as far as playing uh, a team that has had success, I think she would even say that that's in the past. You know, we don't, you know, that we've had a lot of success and we don't talk about it. We're going to focus on the present. Um, I do think us playing in, South, in the Southeastern Conference has prepared us to play anybody in the country. Um, like it was just stated, we took the number one team in the country to date in the overtime. So as far as we're concerned, this is just another incredible opportunity versus another incredible game. The same type of thought we had versus Gonzaga. Nothing more, nothing less. Coach Alex Simon from Bay Area News Group. I'm sure you're going to have plenty of time to go over Stanford film, and we'll ask you about it tomorrow. But yeah. since you mentioned yesterday that you watched their game against Gonzaga, I did. did super quick, did anything stand out about Stanford, even though I know you were focused on Gonzaga? Uh, I mean, I just think Stanford's just a great team. I, I, listen, I, look at, I watch a lot of basketball, so had Sacred Heart won, I would have been prepared. Uh, so, and Stanford has watched us. You know, we got a lot of calls from Stanford when we almost beat South Carolina. <laughs> I think they were rooting for us. So, um, uh, you know, I, we just have a lot of respect for them. They're just super talented. I know Cameron didn't play tonight, but we'll expect her to be there on Sunday. Um, they're just a really solid team. They're experienced. Um, and when you play experienced teams, if you're going to beat them, you need to try to beat them in regulation. So that's what we're going to try to do. 
Coach, Matthew Walter with the Knicks. On the court today, it just seemed like you were so in, in locked in on your team's defense. It sounds like you lost your voice, <laughs> it, it just how much I think you were screaming to them. How <laughs> impressed with you with your team's defensive effort tonight, especially against this Gonzaga team came in shooting 42% from three. They only made one three yeah. all night. And just what you guys did on that side of the ball to completely take them out of their offense. Well, I always get a workout. When, when I coach, I don't sit and I defensive slide up and down the floor. It is why I don't dress up so that I can get a workout. I've been t tracking my, uh, my calories and I've burnt a good bit on here. Um, as, far, uh, as far as our defensive performance, elite. Uh, we held them, uh, we wanted to hold them 12 or less per quarter and we did that. Uh, because they only had 48 points. So was really impressed. I was just in awe watching our team defend. And we, that is who we are, you know. Uh, we wear shirts in practice that say we defend. And usually when we defend at a high level, we can score a lot. So I know people don't look at us as an offensive team, but that doesn't mean we can't score. We just defend so that we can score. And and we did that, and it was it was fun to watch. How important, I mean, when I look at the box score, the number that immediately jumps to me is 24 offensive rebounds. How important to set up what you guys can do defensively is it if you can keep extending possessions the way that you guys did tonight? <clears throat> um, it's who we are, you know? It's, I'm telling y'all, it's, it's playing in the Southeastern Conference, <laughs> you know, every night. We're playing against elite level talent. Uh, we're playing against elite athletes and we have to fight. And I think we've had, I don't know, uh, Madeline will be able to tell me, but we've had multiple 50 rebound performances in conference. So we did not think that that would be impossible for us to do tonight or any time in in, our, in the NCAA tournament, unless we face South Carolina again, um, they're monstrous. But other than that, I mean, that is what we do. So I, th I was more impressed by us holding them to 29% from the field. This is a really good offensive team. But like I told you all in, in the presser, you know, I think that was yesterday or the day before, we've done that all year. So... It is what we expect. You get what I'm saying? It's not, we're not cocky. We, we, it, it is who we are. When you say, though, with the exception of South Carolina, I guess what makes them an exception is maybe, you know, especially Stanford's inside size, maybe a similar level exception to come? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, South Carolina, I mean, I've seen St South Carolina, uh, their front court, is six 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 five six four six three. Uh, Stanford's big, but I don't remember their two guard being six three. <laughs> you know, um, so <clears throat> listen, I I think that they're gonna be um, really good on the glass as well. But even versus South Carolina, uh, we competed. We didn't. They didn't just annihilate us on the glass. It is. That, I guess that's the point I'm making. That's just who we are. So no matter what, we feel like we can rebound with the best of them. And we've shown that because at the end of the day, South Carolina is the number one team in the country until someone beats them. And we've been able to rebound with them. So if anything, it gives us confidence. All right, Coach, you mentioned that uh, how much Tara meant to you, how you, know, you looked up to her. But your contemporary right there in that conference, Dawn Staley, what has she meant to you, especially what she's accomplished being the first black coach to win multiple mm -hmm. national championships? So yeah. what does she mean to you in that conference and as a whole as a black woman? Listen, I'm the young Thundercat in the group, all right? Um, I look up to a lot of coaches. Uh, Dawn Staley is a mentor of mine, um, except for when we played, and she's a foe. But other than that, uh, she has always extended uh, knowledge uh, to me and, uh, and has been someone I can call on. And she's in conference. Tara, not so much. I've just admired her from afar. 
Uh, she's a goat, in my opinion. You know, just what she's done, what she's accomplished. Uh, she hung around. She, you know, she's old school. So she kind of waited till we got out. She was hanging around. And I said, Coach, let me touch your hand because I need you to rub off some of your championship residue on me. And I said, and you play Gonzaga, so give me the scoop. And she looked at me and she said, yo, Gonzaga's good, but so are you. <laughs> so I took that as a compliment. And uh, anytime I get a chance to coach against who I consider to be, you know, some of the pioneers of the game, I feel like I owe it to them to give my best effort. And so that's what I'll do on Sunday. We'll go to Zoom for this next question. John, uh, you can ask your question. Hey, yo, uh, John Sokoloff with uh, WCBI uh, in, in Columbus. I mean, what does kind of a win like tonight kind of do for y'all momentum-wise? And not just taking care of business, but winning in such a kind of dominant fashion in the way you did on, on both sides of the floor. You know, John, we, we felt like we've been the underdogs. I know we were the eighth seed, but they flew us out to the West Coast and had us play a team that had to take an hour flight. So we didn't feel like the eighth seed. <laughs> so um, as far as we're concerned, you know, we, we, we feel like we have something to prove. Um, I feel like the whole SEC feels that way. And uh, I think all of us got to win today. And so we're all rooting, all rooting for each other. And uh, I'm just proud to be a part of this conference. I'm proud to represent the University of Mississippi. And uh, I don't believe in skipping steps. And last year we lost. And Keith could tell you, like, after, the, after we lost, I said, you know, maybe this is how it should be, you know. Uh, we made it to the tournament. It was the first time since, like, 2007, 2008. But now I felt like we needed to take another step. And, uh, and if we win on Sunday, then we're going to keep going. And if we don't, uh, then we're going to celebrate the season. But at the end of the day, we still made a forward step. And uh, I just believe in growing it organically that way. So... We'll go back to Zoom for this next one. Uh, Michael, you can ask your question. Hey, yo. Uh, Snuda brought it up, uh, but, you know, she had had a rough stretch. She had to make a, uh, a shot in, in three games. To, to see her come out the way she did, especially in that second quarter, as somebody who's been with you uh, for a while now, how, how nice was it to see her have her moment? Well, I just knew Snuda was going to give me a compliment because I've been in her ear all week. Uh, so really proud of her. Um, you know, I told Snudder she needed to get back to the Snudder, the non-conference Snudder. The non-conference Snudder was scoring in multiple ways, not just three-point shooting. She was driving to the basket, rebounding, uh, and ones. And so tonight you was able to see that. And when she missed the first two threes, you know, I just told her, like, Snudder, stop praying that it goes in. Just shoot it. Um, and uh, usually she... When she just doesn't try to make it and she just trusts her form, uh, she's able to do it. And so the whole the whole team was really proud of Snitter, and we're going to need that from her. You know, like you said, she's been with me from the jump. She tried to give a sob story, but she wasn't in she wasn't in the dark days when Snitter came. We were in the postseason. She don't know about the dark days, but um, but she but she was one of the her and Madison Scott uh, decided to come to Ole Miss when we went 0-16. You know, you talk about belief. Those two believe more than anybody. So really happy for her. We'll do one final question also from Zoom. Uh, David, you can ask your question. Hey, yo. Um, I guess you're talking so much about defense, and obviously that's kind of what you built your program on. So... I guess just just for you, what's it like for the first win that you get here in the NCAA tournament for it to just kind of epitomize what you've built in, in the way that it did? Poetic is all I can say it was poetic. I mean, uh, you know, we, we clinched fourth place 
in the SEC outright by getting a defensive stop. And uh, Snudder got a block, and that's how we claimed fourth. And so today, to be able to do it in the fashion and to hear our team, like, they really didn't want Gonzaga to get 50 points. Um, and then to see uh, Jordan Berry, who came in as a walk-on, you know, guard 94 feet, uh, it, was, it's, it was poetic. And it's something that makes me proud because here's, here's the thing, David, we don't want to have an identity crisis right now, you know. We want to be who we are, and that's defense. And our defense is the engine to our offense. And, and that, that is what we intend to do on Sunday. We intend to guard. And uh, if we can do that, we feel like we'll have success. So for me, it was poetic. Thank you, Coach, and good luck on Sunday. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone, for attending tonight's games. We look forward to seeing you for the second round this weekend. Thank you, everybody.